Hello, Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. Today, I want to take a couple of minutes and just talk about the supremacy of Jesus Christ. Uh, David Bayshore taught on Sunday regarding uh, Colossians chapter 1, which is just one of the all-time great text on the supremacy of Christ. And just as a little sideline, one of the things I'd encourage you to consider perhaps is that uh, how often the first chapters of various books really deal with Jesus Christ as fully God and his absolute supremacy. For example, in John chapter 1, we see this. Uh, Romans chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1 and Revelation chapter 1. All of those are great texts regarding the deity of Christ. And I think that it's important that they're happening in the first chapter because that's kind of the foundation on which everything else is built. So again, if, you, if you're always wondering where you can see about the deity of Christ and the supremacy of Christ, just remember John 1, uh, Romans chapter 1, uh, also uh, Hebrews chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, and Revelation chapter 1. All of them deal with uh, the deity and supremacy of Christ. But this isn't just a doctrine that we're looking at. It's something that's got great personal import for us. When we consider that everything uh, has come from Christ, is through Christ, is going to Christ, that he is supreme and is person and creation and redemption as we see there in Colossians chapter 1, there are a couple of key practical outcomes for you and me in our life. The first thing of great personal consequence for us is it gives us peace in, 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 in uncertain times. Uh, 2020, again, has been a very strange time, but this is consistent throughout our lives. We're regularly going to face things that we don't understand that can create difficulties for us. And how do we find peace in those times? Well, one of the great ways is focusing on the supremacy of Jesus Christ as we recognize that he made all things. One of the crazy things that's going on around us now, and we're probably going to see even more of this, is a complete denial of some of the most basic facts of creation. People are denying what it means to be human, what it means to be male, what it means to be female, uh, just what life is really about. And you sometimes scratch your head and say, they're denying what is undeniable, what is just plain reality in front of us. Well, the fact is that is what they're doing, but the good news is because Jesus has made everything, we can't escape the way he created things to exist. We can't escape the way he's made things to operate. And so that gives us hope for the future that no matter how we try to blind ourselves, reality has a way of crashing in because it's reality that is made by and summed up in Jesus Christ. Secondly, he not only made all things, he is actively, presently ruling all things. Nothing is outside of the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. Now, this is important for us because it means that, not that everything that's happening is pleasing to God, because it's not, but it means that we can fully and faithfully serve him and then leave things in his hands. He is watching over it. He is uh, accomplishing the results, not us. Paul tells us that, you know, one uh, plants and one waters, but it's God that gives the increase. Our task is not to give the increase. Our task is not the results. Our task is rather to be faithful. We're not called to be successful. We're called to be faithful, to do what he's done and trust that he is sovereignly working all things out according to his plan. We may not understand it. There's a lot of detours along the way, but God is bringing things up the way that he has planned them in Jesus Christ. And then thirdly, everything is heading towards his eternal plan. He not only created all things in the past, he's not only ruling all things in the present, he's guiding everything towards its ultimate end, uh, the ultimate uh, eternal glory and plan of God that is summed up in Jesus Christ. So whatever detours we are experiencing along the way, we know how the story ends. We know where everything is going. And so that can give me peace right now. I may not understand, I may not see how this is going to lead to the end plan, but Jesus does, and he's working all things out to, to sum them up in himself. So that's the first area. It can give us this great uh, peace in uncertain times. But secondly, it really draws us into worship. Sometimes we approach worship and we think we just want to tell each other to worship and we want to encourage and we try to stir it up and you know people use all kinds of lights and smoke and different ways of trying to prompt worship but none of that really creates worship the thing that draws us into worship is simply seeing 
Jesus Christ as he is. This is why when we read the word of God, as we cry out to him in prayer, when we sing songs that are oriented to sing about the greatness of our God, uh, when we hear him preached, it is reorienting and renewing our mind. It reorients our heart. It renews our mind. It draws us towards him. And so it very practically leads us into worship. There is a lot going on today that cries out, and most of what is going on around us, you know, that is consuming the current news cycle is stuff that is of no lasting consequence. It won't even be important a week from now. But every moment we spend meditating on who Jesus is, on his supremacy, on his glory, is a moment that will reap not only temporal, but eternal rewards. So I encourage you, think, and meditate on who Jesus is and what he's doing. Don't meditate on what's going on in the world around us. It will come and go. Whatever happens, happens. But we know that Jesus has created all things, is ruling all things, is working all things out for his ultimate glory. And therefore, we give ourselves in worship to him and faithful service to others. I hope this is encouraging to you, and I want to continue to encourage you. Let's gather together as long as we're having good weather here and we can meet outside. Let's meet together, worship our great God, and then even bring a, a meal to hang out afterwards to spend time in fellowship as uh, with your brothers and sisters, those who've been redeemed by Jesus Christ. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. God bless. Music